three, two, one. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Wake up, time to die. Good morning, Angel. Good morning, Charlie. Yo, she bitch. Let's go. I'm on, Jack. You're so fast, too. Don't fuck with the babysitter. We came, we saw, we kicked it ass. Swing. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Bueller. You can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Oh. Oh. What are you looking at, Spothead? Fucking Chuck Norris. Great Scott. I know this heavy. You just gotta keep living, man. L I V I N. Cinema Royale. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Hello, welcome to a new and exciting episode of Cinema Royale, where topics get bashed around and fucked up. This episode, we're going to talk about comic book movies. I'm your host, Scooter Mike. Along with me is my awesome co-host of movie fans and officiados, including James Sullivan, also known as Jaime Dude. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by... <clears throat> movies that claim to star Jackie Chan, but don't actually star Jackie Chan. Period. Not even stock footage. I thought that would be Bruce Lee, but okay. <laughs> oh, no, wait. No, it's Bruce Lie. Or Bru- or the one I'm playing. It's Brucey Me. I just watched Ninja the Protector last night. <laughs> That's the expectation. Uh, uh, and last but not least... Matt Brunet, also known as Adamat. Hello, everybody. We're here to talk about comic book movies. Happy Cinco de Mayo! That's today. Free tacos Arriba. for everyone. I will celebrate by watching the film Renegado. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yes, today's episode, we're going to talk about comic book movies. And then those are movies that are based off comic books. You know, comic books are a great art form where they include great storylines of, you know, s- superheroes. And, you know, everybody wants to be a superhero. And comic books makes us look up to them in some shape or form. And movies, you know, decide, oh, let's just turn a comic book into a movie. Uh, that will be fun. And, you know, there's a lot of good ones out there and a lot of bad ones. And we're here to talk about them. Okay. So, who would like to get the ball rolling? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think I, I think I could go first. Uh, do we start with the m- more obvious ones, or do you want to go with obscure? Whatever or, you like, or in between, or whatever. Whatever, just shoot. Uh, Remember, guys, let's I'm not see. This show, I just brought you on. <laughs> Um, I think I want to start with Spider Man. Yeah, okay. let's start with Spider Man. Oh. Okay. Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Okay. Sp- well, <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> I want to take it back. Oh, Spider-Man. Only Morgan work here. Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but anyways, um, yeah, why not start with Spider Man since um. Since like it's one of those films that just recently uh, came out with a remake, not long before that, like we we just got like an original trilogy. Now, personally, um, I do enjoy I do personally enjoy like the Sam Raimi trilogy. Like I know they're not the best, but it's like it's campy, and you know I I find it I find it fun to enjoy. Like I, I find like. Like even the third one, well, not mu- like not as much on the third one, but like all of them are pretty good, you know. Like, uh, mm-hmm. like it, it has like the awesome, like super like modern superhero, like what they look like right now. But it has like some kind of like I keep on saying this, but like it has like this kind of camp you would only find in the ni- like in the Adam West Batman series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd say a little bit more. It's it's a little bit more 
uh, on the tough side than than Adam West. But yeah, uh, they're they know when they know when to be serious and and they know when to when to have their quips. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. that's what made the the Spider Man trilogy good was that. Uh, and, and they were good actors too, mm-hmm. all of them. Mm-hmm. They were all mm-hmm. very solid in their roles. They they filled the shoes. They they knew what they were doing. They were well casted. Uh, and yes, yeah, um, it, it's ironic that you've brought this up because I just had the I just had the uh, lack of privilege of watching the Amazing Spider Man uh, this uh. past week. Uh, yeah, if I can. And, oh, go on. And uh, it, it it it's a case of everybody everybody whose opinion that I trusted told me that it was going to suck. And uh, I uh, I listened. I did. I listened. But uh, I didn't go out of my way to watch this movie. It literally came to me. Uh, just as an offering, it offered itself up to me. So, mm. as silly as that sounds, and Did you enjoy it, it? it's every bit as bad as they say. Yeah, honestly, I real, I, I honestly hate the, um, I honestly hate the Amazing Spider-Man. I feel like. When when you want to remake a franchise, you want to try like some. You want to try like I understand. You want to try something new. Try to be something a little more different than what they did before. I think they remade Spider Man too soon. That's the problem. They, they remade Spider Man too soon because like like the only like I can understand like the up like look at Batman like. Batman, like, the Batman franchise was done, like, during the 90s and stuff like that. It wasn't, like, the Christopher Nolan films wasn't remade until, like, several years later, give or take around a decade. Like, when technology has totally changed and stuff like that. But with the Spider-Man movies, nothing really changed. There's, like, we still get, like, the same, uh, uh, like web shooting stuff and see in all the cgis and stuff like that but like nothing really changed in terms of the quality of the movie between like the original sam raimi trilogy and the amazing spider-man plus the fact it's like the cat like peter parker in um in the amazing spider-man i don't know like he's too cocky i i, I find like that's why I really do make, like. Uh, oh, who, crap. I, he's I so cocky, he would got, make Tony Stark flush. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> oh crap! Wait, who's the original spot? Who's in the original Sam Raimi one? I forgot his name. Why? Why did I forget his name? Tobey Maguire. Tobey Maguire. Yeah. Uh, I find Tobey Maguire to be the perfect role for Spider-Man. He's not like. It's how like he's completely different different than everyone else like he's he's like a, a shy little nerdy guy you know like it's completely di- it's like it's what makes him stand out from all the other ones but like you make him cocky and it's like he's suddenly, he's no different than like tony stark or like or, or any other superhero you know like i find that being cocky is a little bit of a trait it's like a stereotypical trait for being a superhero because there's a lot of ca- there's a lot of superheroes that are pretty cocky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, you know what I mean. It's like one of their. It's like it's like a bad trait that would like at one point lead to their ultimate downfall in like superhero movie number five or something like that. Hmm. Yeah, the uh, for yeah for somebody who had just lost a a beloved family member who the 
the movie forgot to make lovable, uh, mm-hmm. quite frankly. Um, uh, yeah, he's way too cocky. And, uh, and you know, it, it's hard to find even the, uh, even the girlfriend I didn't like. It was just hard to find yeah, Mary Jane. a likable... It was hard to find a likable heroes in this. So, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like, I will the admit best, uh, that, like... Sorry? The best 10 seconds of the movie is uh, is actually the uh, the Stanley cameo, but that said, it doesn't make up for the rest of it. Yeah, well, there's always a Stan... It's a Marvel movie. Of course there's going to be a Stan Lee cameo. <laughs> of course, you dumb mm-hmm. schmuck. You could take all the cameos of Stan Lee and you could just make a feature out of it. <laughs> Stan Lee the movie. Stan Lee the movie. And it would it would be truncated and have no connected plot whatsoever, but it would still be better than The Amazing Spider-Man. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I have not seen The Amazing Spider-Man yet, so I would just have to hold my opinion on that till whenever I see it. But I truly love the Spider-Man trilogy with Sam Raimi because Sam Raimi is one of my favorite directors. Mm-hmm. Um, something to note is that before Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, there was a 1970s Spider-Man. There was a t- TV. Mm-hmm. There was a TV movie called Amazing Spider-Man, and that was like a backdoor pilot for the a live-action Spider-Man series that came out in the 70s. Uh, was that I the Japanese that. one? Like, no, this, this is a U.S. Americanized Spider-Man live-action series that came out in the seventies. Mm. Oh, I, I never, I never heard of that. I never actually heard of that. I, I know the, um, like the nineteen sixties Ralph Bakshi cartoon, but I've or Bakshi or, or something like that. But um, I, I've never heard of that live-action uh, Spider-Man. Yeah, it's something I've kind of heard of. I was like, oh, this is interesting. I think we heard Ghost Rider in the background. Yeah, um, you, yeah, you did. Yeah, Ghost Rider just passed by <laughs> my house. That's really awesome. <laughs> Speaking of superheroes. Uh... Or, oh, no, that would be Stan Lee. In, that would be Stan Lee in a motorcycle. <laughs> That's his brief cameo for this podcast. <laughs> Yes. I, I could have said I could have said hi to Stanley. He's right out my window. Um But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, Spider Man's I I mean Spider Man has a cool little niche he's got going. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of him because, come on, they're bitten by a radioactive spider and turned into a man who has spider powers. I mean that's just not super duper to me. <laughs> you could do better mm. than that. You could be a better superhero than being a Spider Man. You ever notice how there how there seems to be with these uh in the Spider Man movies with these with these so selective uh accidents that endow people with superpowers? Yes. yes. Uh there seems to be a there seems to be a a very selective process between which ones will endow you with a sense of ethics and which ones won't like if you get bitten by a spider you're a, you're still a good guy but if anything else happens you're a bad guy yeah spiders are the power of good for some reason mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. machines bad <laughs> um if you if you accidentally get your superpowers that means you're good but if you but if you uh, if you dive into a sand pit, uh... I think I think everyone else was an accident as well. Um, oh my gosh! Well, Doctor Octopus uh, uh, reaped his own uh, reaped his own um, Green Goblin reaped his own, uh, and actually actually Venom was an accident. 
I'd say purely, but uh, 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 but yeah, it yeah, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> um, I would like to bring up since we had that cameo from you know who, uh, Ghost Rider. I mean, Ghost Rider has a interesting sort of origin story. I mean, and of course in the movie, Nicolas Cage plays uh, Ghost Rider. And knowing me, I love Nicolas Cage, and he was campy as hell and menacing in Ghost Rider. Mm -hmm. I actually recently saw Ghost Rider... I don't know. I, I have a bit of a mixed feeling towards Ghost Rider. Like, like the concept seems pretty cool, but like I see him, I see Ghost Rider more like as a villain because, like, the way from what I understand when I saw the movie, the way he turns into Ghost Rider is like it's pretty much he's like the Hulk. Pretty much, Nicholas. It's like Nicholas Cage's answer to the Hulk. Yeah, you know? yeah, I see what you mean. It's like he, it's like you make him angry, or you make him torture, or something, or something like that, and then suddenly, boom, he suddenly turns into like hellfire, and then, yeah, and then just goes out making one-liners. <laughs> yeah, love... I remember when uh, I remember when the Hulk uh, spouted one-liners. That was awesome. <laughs> okay, no, I don't mean like. <laughs> Like the the freaking Hulk, it's like, like at least like Ghost Rider can talk, but the Hulk, Hulk would be like, <laughs> what puny god? Yeah, I think I just dumbified the Hulk. I was gonna say, did the Hulk was the Hulk played by Arnold Schwarzenegger at one point? <laughs> <laughs> no, smash, smash. Hulk smash! Lol. Mm-hmm. I think that's just Arnold on a bad day. Arnold smash! How come I don't get more than California? Arnold smash! Lol. I can't go back to my movie career. Everybody thinks I'm too old. <laughs> um... Yeah. Sylvester Stallone is making movies. I might as well make my own movie. <laughs> I can still be the Terminator. I'll just be a little rusty. <laughs> Where's Terminator 5? I want to sign on with Rick G. <laughs> oh my God. That was... um, I just realized something. James, wasn't Arnold uh -huh. your leader at one point? My oh. my leader, governor. Yeah. yeah, you're in California, aren't you? He was the governor of your state at one point. Yeah, I, uh, he was the governor of my state, but um, I can't remember if I if I voted in either of those uh, elections. <laughs> but um, <laughs> as he was an interesting cross, a liberal Republican, very. It was like uh, it was like oil trying to cancel out water. Uh, but uh, um, it's Robin Williams of all Volvo for gun rack. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he actually appeared in a comic book movie, which we should all agree that really sucked. You know what movie I'm talking about? Oh, wait a minute! Yes. Co the last comic book hero, wasn't it? That's <laughs> no. I actually enjoyed that. That was actually pretty good. That's not. That's the last action hero. Oh, well, my mistake. If you want to talk, if you want to talk though about that one though, the video game sucked. Oh. Oh, did it? I never played the video game. I played the Game Gear version. You're up against guys with guns, and all you have is your fist. But, uh, yeah, and this... Sounds like the uh, Terminator video games. <laughs> this said movie, which I'm not even going to name it, because you don't... What is it? I, I honestly don't know. 
in this this movie is within a major movie series known as the Batman movie series. Oh, that one. Oh, it was. We dur- don't mention oh, that. Oh, it's Junior. Around here. <laughs> <laughs> what? I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't Bat mention that. Nipples the movie. But Batman is one of my favorite superheroes, and I love the Batman film series, except for the one that should not be named. Oh, uh, yeah. But if I could be if I could be really honest, like, I know I might be backlash for this, but I understand what, they're tr- what um, Schumacher is trying to do with the movie. Because, like, as like, like what we talked about with Spider-Man and stuff, stuff like that. Having camp in your, uh, um, in like having camp with a bit of seriousness can be a good thing. Sam Raimi did it ex- did it pretty well in the Spider-Man movies. Third one is debatable. This one, he did it like too much of. It's like it just doesn't really in in that movie it just doesn't really work because like there's just too much camp and like it's but like there's there's a good there is some amount of seriousness but there's too much camp yeah yeah i totally agree Mm -hmm. he went like a little too extreme to be a bit like the adam west one yeah well that one was especially made like it was a full length t- toy commercial, pretty much, because they're selling toys because of the movie. And there was, there's a re- recently they, they released a like uh, a featurette from Batman and Robin, and everybody was was talking about the movie, and they mentioned that how the toys are being success, and this one's looked like a big giant toy commercial, and everybody hated it for some odd reason. I I. I mean, it was a really interesting featurette that's on YouTube now. Wait, why are yeah. we talking about yep. cars again? <laughs> nah, just kidding. Go on. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I don't see why they, I don't know what Schumacher was thinking. Oh, he must have been high on something, because, I mean, why? Well, I'm just telling you, like, he wants to try to revive, like, that that camp feeling in the, um, in the original bat in the original like Adam West Batman shows and like that, honestly if you're if you want to make a movie and you want to try to go like campy like, like that like campy Adam West Batman try to go full out camp like get out there like try to be all camp don't go like do a super big budget try to make it look a, try to make it look as good as the Tim Burton movies you know yeah like if you want to go camp go all out if you're going to go cheap, go all cheap. Yeah. That's pretty much what I've learned recently in um, – it, it's something that I've learned in art school pretty much. Like if you want – like don't try to mi- – like sometimes it works trying to mix a bit of both. But if there's one – if there's one element that's popping out more than the other, then just screw the, screw the other ele- element that's not much and focus on the one and just go – all out with it. That's pretty much the idea. Schumacher, he just did, he he like unbalanced the amount of camp and seriousness, and that's the problem. Like honestly, he he should he should have gone all out camp. Like I know there would be a lot of angry people out there, but the movie would have worked at least a bit better, and there could have been like a cult following or something like that. Hmm. Yeah. Well. Sounds crazy, but I'm just saying. Sounds yeah, like, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, the one thing I have to say about that movie the the costumes, aside from aside from some uh, aside from some flaws, were actually really cool to look at. You know, they were sleek. They were uh, they were very heavy looking. And they're they're actually pretty colorful as well. I will mm-hmm. I will admit that. Like the color, I, I find like that like that Batman movie. Like the colors are like really bold and they really do pop out. Like uh, Poison Ivy, um, like she's all green. Um, mm-hmm. 
uh, Mr. Freeze is all blue, is like major light blue. Mm-hmm. Even uh, even uh, Bane, he's like major, uh, like he has like, even though it's like he's just black, like just wearing black and stuff like that. It's like his colors really do like pop out. He's got that sick yellowness on his skin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, so let's move on to another... Let's move on to another subject. Um, well, not necessarily. Not we really, are no. Batman, so... Well, we can talk about another Batman movie. I mean, there's so many in the series of Batman. I mean, there's... You could talk about I Tim... I ready to choose from. I don't know which one to go fast with. We could talk about Tim Burton's two Batman movies. You can talk about the other Schumacher Batman movie. Or you can talk about the trilogy of uh, Nolan's Batman or movie. Could, or you could go with the 1960s movie like base that's directly based from the uh, show. West yeah. West, uh, show. Which I have not seen, so I don't know personally <laughs> what that. <clears throat> I used to watch the Adam West show when I was a kid. Uh, I probably wouldn't watch it now. And I know, and I know people would love it. I know people love that, but oh. <laughs> no, I understand what, what you mean. It's just that right now, Batman is starting to be like figure, like being taken seriously. Yeah. In today, in like in today's media and movies, video games and stuff like that, Batman is portrayed like so grim and so seriously it's like when you take when you when you look at something like like uh the the 1960s show and you take it to the opposite like um like you you show like all camp and all humorous and stuff like that it's like you you would have mixed feelings it's like this is not it's like this is not the batman you're looking for Mm mm-hmm Mm-hmm. And, and that was not too, a, like, intended to be a that was not intended to be a Star Wars reference, was it? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah. May fourth yesterday, so Revenge of the Fifth. <laughs> um <laughs> when it comes to Batman I, th- I yeah, you personally think of him as a gritty, this badass, serious guy. I mean, with the '60s Batman, I mean, it's like really you had to flip it around and make it campy and goofy. It should have been a little bit more serious, but you know, '60s were a totally different time back then. Um, mm-hmm. With the no, I would like to talk about the Nolan trilogy really because. Nolan has brought Batman to a different light since, you know, the 90s with Schumacher and and Burton, Burton of course. Uh, ba- i actually seen all three of the trilogy movies. <clears throat> Batman Begins is a, is a great origin for Batman. I mean, it's a, little, it's a little bit different than what the comics portray it as. I mean, they talk about Bruce's parents being dead, but they're, they also add in that Bruce is afraid of bats and... He chose the bat as his, you know, portrayal of Batman because, you know, if he's afraid of it, people should be afraid of him because he doesn't like bats, which I did understand, really. Um, I don't know. I, Batman Begins is not... Although, like, I'm... Sorry, go on. Batman Begins is not really a good beginning of the trilogy. I mean, I, I thought it was okay. It was not the greatest Batman movie out there. Just it's a great origin story, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Somehow, what? I mean, somehow uh, uh, the Dark Knight kicked it up a notch. Yes, I was just gonna say the Dark, yeah, yeah. the Dark Knight came out and boom, they brought it up another notch, and it was actually one of the best ones in the series, I think. Mm-hmm. De- definitely, definitely, like, like I, I find that I. I would like, like, if they're going to do another, like, Batman movie, I would love to see, like, another uh, take on the, um, like, Batman, like, the origins of Batman. Like, honestly, how they've done it here is, like, Yeah, yeah, I totally totally agree. Now that, 
now that they did a movie where Batman is, uh, like, now that Batman is made and stuff like that, uh, now they can, uh, like, that's when it really started. It's like, okay, we got the origins. Okay, we got the origins that we didn't do better, but we got a better idea for, like, what's going to be f- uh, coming afterward. Like, they cut the bull crap, and now, like, let's move on to the good stuff. Yeah. I feel like they just have asked the origin, kind of. They mention the, the real origin, and they just kind of like, oh, let's just go with the flow and just fuck it. And then they make it better with the sequels. <laughs> I I think. I mean, the Dark Knight, Ian, come on, Heath Ledger is a Joker. Is, on a, is one of the best Jokers besides Jack, Nich- Jack Nicholson's Joker in the original Batman movie. Um, what, about the, uh, what about Mark Hamill? I personally have not seen seen the animated series well what about arkham what did, did you play uh, arkham nope. asylum arkham city nope not even nope <laughs> well my friend have i got a request for you <laughs> i actually i i've seen i was cl- a failed attempt sorry right. i've seen clips of mark hamill as the joker and i think he's actually pretty good i mean i have not seen the full series but a clips of it i mean I should. He's like in the top three. I mean, J- Jack Nicholson, Mark Hamill, and then Heath Ledger. That's the top three. Oh yeah. And then Dark Knight Rises, is uh, I mean, of course they had to bring Bane, of course, and he's more menacing and a little bit more badass than the other fucking movie. Honestly, I am so surprised. Um, personally, I think other than the Joker, I think Bane is like the best villain they've ever made in that trilogy. Like, I was so surprised. Like, the way it's like more his attitude and like is more. Yeah, it's more his attitude and his personality. Like, especially like in a big like when he's fighting Batman, like he's just acting polite, polite yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, you ever lied, Mister Bane? What are the Oh, so Bruce, you're trying to go out to attack me. Oh, <laughs> let's just see about that. <laughs> the city is yours. Yeah. You have ultimate freedom, but I will keep you all strapped here with a bomb. <laughs> oh, yes. Um. Can I go on? Uh. <laughs> yeah. Bane is an interesting, an interesting case of a villain because, if memory serves, he was not, uh, he was not born out of the comics. He was born, I, I think, I could be wrong about this. He, he was born out of the, uh, the Batman animated series. I will. The animated series, really? I, I could really be wrong about that, or maybe that just made him popular. No, he was uh, actually No, he was, he was he was in the comics. He's from the Yeah, he was in the comics, but was he created in the comics or was he created in <clears throat> Batman the animated series? The character's origin was in Batman Vengeance of Bane number 1 from January of 1993. Okay, so it is a comic. Okay, I stand corrected. Just like every other character. I was bo- I was born in a comic, raised in a comic. <laughs> all right, yeah, and I can I, I kind of see uh, with, from it. with all right. I would I, I I would say something here with Schumacher's Bane. He did not talk at all, but the costume was right. Yeah. With Nolan's Bane, the costume was half right i mean this face mask was a little bit different than what this comic origin is because his mask was a you know a, a rust a mix like a wrestler's mask honestly i i find to be pretty i find the bane like the nolan version to be pretty good like i don't mind that um that it's not really like the same as the comic but i find i find it to be like um a real like Homage. What would Bane be like in real life? Yeah, I, true. I yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, version of Bane. And most, I mean, there's a lot of comic nerds out there that might nitpick about costumes and all that stuff. That's not me. I just noticed something. That's all. But yeah, I yeah. totally agree with that. 
Plus, um, yeah. Although well, I just well, want to say this, like as great, like I find that as great as the Batman movie, like as amazing and awesome as the Christopher Nolan movies are, I don't find them to be that perfect. No, and for one yeah. reason only, it's just that although it's probably the best Batman movies, it's mo- they most certainly do not have the best Batman in there. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Chris- personally, like, Christian Bale, I will, like, he's a great, he could be a great Bruce. He can't be a great Batman. Yeah. It's just the, like, the voice you can't really take seriously. Exactly. That's the problem. If you're as comprehensible as Bane, you got issues. Yeah. <laughs> uh... uh... Well, uh, let's see. Uh, did they did they ever explain why Bane, um, why Bane had that mask? Because it uh, seems to be vital to his system. Uh, uh, no, vital to keeping him alive. I don't know. I, don't I know. honestly don't know. That's actually a good question. Um... Smell. <laughs> <laughs> He's tired of holding his like. His retain like his uh, like his spray thing. So he just he just has like this self-made mask for it. Oh, jeez. He's got breath spray in there. Yeah. Oh. Uh... <laughs> My lungs don't work as usual. It's even worse. That's why I have a twenty-four hour thing. I have to even wear it when I sleep. All right, yeah. If you if you paid attention during the movie, apparently, I mean, here's what if you were this is spoilers if you if you have not seen The Dark Knight Rises, but Bane was reportedly born and raised in a foreign prison known as the Pit, and he yeah. was became friends with he became the friend and protector of a young girl who liked him, who was also born in the Pit, and after the girl's mother was killed by the prison's crazy inmates. Bane was protecting her for several years until she finally escaped by climbing up the surface, blah, blah, blah. Um, While helping her escape, Bane is attacked and severely injured by the other inmates, leaving him near death. The prison's resident doctor attempted to heal his injuries, but Bane has ended up in a state of constant pain and forcing him to wear a mask which provides him with a constant stream of as an as anal tech gas which keeps his pain just below the threshold the fuck enabling him to function normally hmm so it, it's so yeah his mate his he's got the mask because you know because of that situation okay oh, okay makes sense so they do explain it in the movie well, like, how is it that Bane I escaped again? It. What? How is it that Bane escaped again? Well, like, how uh, did he get out of the pit? Uh, mm. uh, Bane is then rescued by his friend's father, Ra'al Ghul, and recruited into oh, the Ra- League of Shadows. Ra's oh, okay. Wait, Al Ghul. Yeah. Sorry, I'm the one that can't pronounce anything, so thanks for correcting that for me. Gosh. Don't worry, everybody else does it to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. No, no, no. no. Mis- you're, 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 you're. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm still learning how to pronounce stuff, but yeah. Ra- oh, sorry. That's cool. It's Rosh Al Ghul in the comics. Ha 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 ha. Al Ghul? Rosh really? Rosh Al Ghul, yeah, because it's. I don't know why he's named like that. It's so weird. I mean, Liam Neeson does play him. I mean, I never read the comics, but Liam Neeson is a badass as that character. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, he, he's awesome as that character. Yeah, he's awesome as Rosh Al Ghul, but. Uh... Yeah, there's nothing bad I could say about that. No, exactly. You just say, oh, <laughs> He's good. oh, oh Liam Neeson trained Batman. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then here comes the taking jokes. Yeah, and... Mm-hmm. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it taken? 
Yeah, yeah, it's funny because yeah. if you watch Batman Begins, it kind of mentions that he mentions that his wife was taken, and it's like it's like a prequel to Taken Two. I I I is the first Taken. I, I, what are you talking? I a lot of people are like, hey, Batman Begins must be a prequel to Taken Two because his wife was taken just like in the movie. Yeah, and the Amazing Spider-Man is a sequel to Life Life of Pi. It all makes sense now. <laughs> what? I know it's it's the latest shabakery on the internet. Mm-hmm. Um. Enough enough about Batman, because seriously, we can't. I am getting freaking tired of it. Uh. Yeah. All right. Wait. Recently. Just recently, Iron Man 3 came out on Friday. Last Friday. Ah, yeah. So, Iron Man. We're going to talk about that. I had to to tie it in somehow because it came out recently. And Iron Man is this sinaical billionaire. Just Robert Downey Jr. plays excellent as Tony Stark, pretty much. Yeah. Like even uh, Stan Lee himself said that uh, that it's it's like um, Robert Downey Jr. is perfect for um, yeah he was for... like, like he was born to play Tony Stark in Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he. I I like the first Iron Man. I re- I really liked it. Uh, the second man, I so. I didn't care for so much, and then I haven't seen the third one yet. So. No, 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 me neither. We we have none. None of us have seen the third one yet, but I had to mention it somehow. Um, yes, I love the first one, obviously, and the second one was meh. Yeah, I'm pretty much with you guys. Like the the first one was pretty awesome. The second one is like meh, but I do like like the only thing I do like is. Uh, uh, the I think the villain by Mickey Rourke. Oh right? yeah, was it Mickey? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's was Mickey, it Mickey Rourke. Rourke? Yeah, yeah. The, like, the Thunder Whips. Mm-hmm. Like the concept of the character is actually really cool, and I really do like how they portrayed him in that movie. But overall, like the movie itself is like meh. It's like the it's not really that good. Yeah. yeah, it's like the first with the first Iron Man. It was impressive to see a character who was actually, I, I dare I say, a rather, rather cocky. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, get into a situation where he had to get himself out otherwise it was his life and uh, that was a very that to me appeared to be a very humbling experience and then you know he here's a guy who goes off and decides to do something else with his life feeling like he, he's got that, that duty to his his fellow man um Iron Man too. The the cockiness of the character was not just back. It was, it was hardcore. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I I could not listen to him for the first half hour of the movie, because it was like taking a cheese grater to your face. <sighs> yeah, I see where you're going with it. Mm-hmm. But per you know taking personally. There, there is one thing I really do find interesting about uh, Iron Man, is that I, I find it interesting how, like the one thing that he's different, uh, like from every other superhero that I know, is that he doesn't care about like he lets everyone Tony Stark lets everyone know that he's Iron Man. Yeah. If you look at Booth Wayne or Clark Kent or Peter Parker or stuff like that, they have to hide the fact. Mm-hmm. That a superhero and probably one or two people know that he's that person like he like Clark Kent is Superman or Bruce Wayne is Batman but like with with Tony Stark he could just go out like to the public media like at the end of the fir- at the first Iron Man like he's just oh probably spoiler alert maybe I don't know it's like he's just out there I was like by the way it's like he's in a press conference oh by the way I'm Iron Man Ta-da! <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, he he he's in a situation where the other well, the other superheroes they feel like they have to keep their identity a secret, but he, for whatever reason, does not. Uh, whenever, whenever any other superhero uh, loses their loses their identity, or the it's either it's either they they have to tell somebody after after a long time, or the uh, the secret gets out by accident. Uh, Tony Stark is just like, okay, you guys are gonna find out anyway, so. Here we go. It's out there. Why the hell not? I'm freaking Iron Man. No, 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 no. Hey, bad guys. I live in that house. You don't come after me. <laughs> I've got a hundred billion dollars. I'm rich, damn it. I can do whatever the hell I want. It's in that bank over there. <laughs> <laughs> All of my money's in a giant bank right over there. <laughs> Don't try to steal it or break it down. <laughs> somebody uh, had a great I, somebody can, some hmm? Hmm? Yeah, go on. Somebody had a, a great uh, a, a great joke on, on Facebook. They said they said, uh, "Am I the only one who every time Tony Stark uh, assembles uh, the Iron Man costume, I want to shout out Blather and Blatherskite?" Wait, what? Blather and Blatherskite? Uh, it's a it's a Ducktales reference. Oh, oh yes, I know what you're talking about now. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes! Oh my God, I never thought about that. Oh wait. my gosh! Gizmo I think- Duck. Gizmo Duck. Gizmo Duck. Gizmo Gizmo Duck. Oh my gosh. I just got flowed with nostalgia there. Wow. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, I pretty much. What, what do you guys want to talk about next for comic book movies? I pretty much segued into two topics. So, what do you guys want to talk about next? Well, I want to talk about something here. Unless Matt has something. Not really. Not not on the top of my head. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, a few references here. So I'm, I guess I'm cheating. Um, uh, I want to bring up the case of the mask. Oh, yes. Matt? The mask. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. We're not going to talk about what I think we're talking about. I don't think we're going to talk no, about... No, 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 no. No, we're talking about the. No. I was talking about the first movie. Not the sequel. Yes. Good. Okay. Good. Oh, sweet. Okay. Geez. Um. Okay. The oh, mask I want to bring okay. up because. <laughs> Anyways, go on. The mask I want to bring up because it was a, a case of um, something that. Uh, I I haven't quite read myself in terms of the comics, but I I'm really curious one of these days, you know, just to get my my hands on the source material. Uh, the mask, the movie was a very it was a very uh, popular '90s comedy with Jim Carrey. It launched. It, he'd already had his career going, but it really just launched him into superstardom. Mm-hmm. And uh, the uh, uh, people uh, don't commonly know that it was it was based off of a comic book that was, well, while actually comical, was very dark and grisly and would have probably get gotten an R rating if they had stuck to the source material. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. The, for example, it, it appears that uh, there's no, there's no Stanley Ipkiss in the, in the uh, the mask comics, but what they do have is a, a series of mask wearers, 
which mm-hmm. is a great concept, I think. Um, yeah. You know, every so, every couple of issues, the uh, the mask finds a new owner who has who has a goal, and uh, the mask endows them with the with the uh, the powers to achieve that goal. But the problem with that is uh, he who wears the mask has no sense of ethics whatsoever. So it's and, like an anthology. Uh, yeah. It's like a constant uh, Tales from the Crypt warning about greed. Ah. Yeah. I was wondering, in the comic, do like, does every mask wearer become like some sort of cartoon character afterwards, or is that just in the movie? Uh, they they become maniacal and cartoonish, uh, but um, hmm, let me see if I can pull up a picture here. Uh, just to sort of illustrate. Uh, he's 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 definitely inspired by the Joker, which is which is still pretty evident in the uh, the mask film. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the Joker, they actually had a crossover with each other. Oh, really? They did? Joker in the mask number one through four. That sounds interesting. Okay, so uh, here is an image URL. That uh, I have just pulled up. Uh, did you guys get that? Yeah, I got it. Uh, yeah. Hold on. I just want to know if I can open it without a. What the heck? Yep. What the heck? Yeah. What is that? This is what uh, the co- This is what the movie didn't show you. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, that looks like the mask if it was worn by the Tales from the Crypt guy. The Crypt Keeper. Yeah, yeah, by the Crypt Keeper. Yeah. Although, I would like to see Crypt Keeper played by, uh, Jim Carrey. Oh, why, hello there, boils and ghouls! <laughs> Tonight, we got a really interesting tale to tell you. <laughs> It's like the it's like the Grinch becoming the the Crypt Creeper, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> ever, that's the. Uh, have you ever noticed how many times uh, a successful a successful Jim Carrey movie requires him to wear green? Yeah, it's true. Like even in that. Uh, yes, the. Yeah. Yeah. Grinch. Uh. Uh. Hit that. That bat. Batman, Batman Beyond. Batman Forever. Batman, Batman Forever, Forever. Forever as the Riddler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Batman Forever. He's the Riddler. Uh. What else? Did he wear green in Bruce Almighty? No. No. Liar. Liar. Mm, no. Okay. Okay. So I guess it's more of a when he's. When he's supposed to be more of a, a more um, fictional character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because when he tries to be realistic, he's still the same thing, I suppose. Except in twenty three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this uh, this comic book version of the mask, I I remember turning around pages, uh, in a, in the catalog for comic books, and um, seeing. Seeing this grinning face, uh, smeared with blood. So what? Yes, as a child, I came across a cover that looked like that. So that was that was that how picture. dark the. Wow. Huh? You don't have that picture here, do you? No. Okay. Good. <laughs> I don't want to traumatize anybody any more than I already have. Okay, because like, okay, just thinking about that face that you just showed us with the, uh, like that with blood, that would be pretty horrifying. 
Like the only thing I don't think not even Jim Carrey uh, like can make can make it like can like cure like can not make that like even more scary, you know? It's just like it's just you see that with blood. Don't try this at home, kids. It can be really messy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, maybe it's uh, maybe he's uh, part brainy, he's part jokey Smurf. You know, he's got the exploding. <laughs> I can imagine, or no, no, the perfect line he would say. No, knowing Jim Carrey and like in the mask, like there'd be blood everywhere. Like, he'll just turn into a janitor. Clean up at all five! I get this one. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so enough about enough about the mask. Um, unless you guys want to talk about the TV series, which I never saw. Nope. Okay. It's been far too long. I remember seeing it, but it's been far too long for me to remember. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. There's so many to choose from. Let's see. Time is set. set. Uh, There's actually a comic book movie called Dr. Giggles. Dr. Giggles? I didn't know Virus was based on a comic. Yes, Dr. Giggles... Yeah. That sounds like a children's book thing. Mm-hmm. Or, I'm not... or is it either not... like a scary clown or a doctor your kids should not see because they might get touched by this guy. And not and like not the kind that would make you do get, make you do like good giggles. The tagline for this movie is the Hippocratic Oath. <laughs> um, here's something that's a little odd that I found out. Weird Science is based off a comic. What? Yeah. Weird Science? Yeah, Weird Science, the 1985 movie, is based off a comic. It's, um, let me explain a little bit. Uh, Weird Science is a science fiction anthology comic book from the 50s. And the movie is an expansion and modernized version of the basic premise of the story made of the future in the fifth issue. Hmm. I didn't know that, so... There you go, Weird Science is a comic book movie. Huh. Weird Science... Actually, I, I, and the sad thing about that is, late in the recent news, they're remaking Weird Science. Yeah, I heard that oh, recently. God. Yeah, but that's not gonna be good. No, it won't. Um. Anyway, and they actually, there was also a Weird Science TV show. Yes, that too. But I have not seen that personally, and that just ah. Uh, uh, but I, I haven't seen it either. But I know that there's a in the pilot episode. There's one rather infamous line that they used, and that was uh, something to the degree of, "Oh, but it's possible to, it's possible to, make entirely possible to make a woman, uh, through science." I saw it in a John Hughes movie. Yeah, once. it's yeah, it's, it's right here. It says. Uh... In the pilot episode, Gary claims that Crane Lisa is possible because he saw it in a John Hughes movie. That, of course, was Weird Science. Oh. <laughs> just like a, just like a reference to the movie. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's like they just made it so they, they just made their own paradox, time paradox. Yep. <laughs> yep. The the TV show will collapse upon itself. And meet Ferris Bueller in hell. Yep. <laughs> and Uncle Buck. And Uncle Buck. <laughs> um, uh, some comic book movies. Was there an Uncle Buck TV show too? There was. That's why I mentioned it. Okay. Yeah. So. But we're not talking about TV shows. That's, that's 
that might be something else. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Crow. Oh, The Crow. I have not seen it, so... I have not seen The Crow. Uh, this is... Uh, the Crow and the series of films that it... that it became, although... although a, a significant chunk of the... of the sequels were pretty bad. Um... Uh, this is what, uh... This is the kind of thing that I would have liked to have seen out of a mask sequel. Uh, they keep the premise of uh, they keep the premise of uh, a character who's endowed with a certain type of superpower, and uh, they go with it with uh, from one movie to the next, but switch off, but switch off their their heroes. I think that would have been a, a better idea. Um, the crow, uh, they all, they all have the same backstory in the crow movies, and uh, it's always it's a different hero, but they always uh, they're always uh, somebody who died under a tragic circumstance. They lost a loved one, and they've come back from the grave. For revenge, and so it the mask sequels should have just been like the comics, with the mask being transferred to another wearer. Hmm. What do you guys think? No comment. That's interesting enough. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Although, uh, although then you have a case of the Crow Wicked Prayer, which had uh, Edward Furlong. Goodness gracious. Uh, jeez. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll sum up the movie in one line from it. Uh, quote the Raven nevermore, motherfucker. <laughs> what? Oh, snap. What? Um, <laughs> so, so most of the uh, comic book movies, they're made from three individual comic book companies. Some movies are based off Dark Horse comics, some movies are based off DC comics, and some movies are based off Marvel comics. And some mm. are, and some are in between those, you know, some rare obscurities such as the weird science comic, which is not from either of them. Um, recently, Marvel has been going crazy with their uh, movies. I mean, recently we had over the past ten years was just, you know, the Incredible Hulk, Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, and that led up to. The Avengers, mm-hmm. and it was clever enough to you know have each of these separate movies have a connecting like plot via a character such as Nick Fury, who's gets a cameo appearance once in a while in the, at the end of the movie to kind of recruit mm-hmm. them for the Avengers. Yeah, and I think that's clever. I thought that was like the most clever thing they ever done with these movies, and the. Mm-hmm. And at the big payoff, the Avengers was outstanding. It it just it was what I was expecting from watching these movies individually. It's like I like to see these guys work together, and boom, the Avengers did it very well. Especially you know it's, it was directed by Josh Whedon, which is yeah, another favorite director of mine. Hmm. Mm, definitely, definitely, man. I, I I admit I haven't seen uh, much of Joss Whedon's work. Uh, I I did watch some episodes. I did watch one episode of Buffy, but Firefly I'm not I uh, I'm not familiar with. Uh, yeah, he's he's slowly getting into the movie business a little bit now because he's mostly known as a TV person. And Buffy is a really good show, and especially Firefly. I love Firefly, just to get off of the TV tangent here. 
And, uh, I don't know, he's been on and off with TV shows because he's got some canceled, and, you know, in the movies, you know, he's, he uh, did the sequel to Firefly Serenity, and he did The Cabin in the Woods, you know, like, I think he co-produced it with somebody, and then... Uh, yeah, Cabin in the Woods, definitely a mixed bag. Yeah, definitely. Um, mm-hmm. And actually, here's the funny thing about The Avengers, is that I think during the post-productions of The Avengers, he filmed another movie behind the scenes, like, in secret. Really? Mm. And that movie is the Shakespeare a- adaptation of Much Ado About Nothing. Hmm. Oh. And he filmed it in his backyard at his home. <laughs> oh, is that... Uh, oh, I, I think I saw the trailer for that. I was like, this is the same guy that did the... This is the same guy that did the Avengers movie. He directed this... It it almost looks like it was shot on home video. Yeah, which I thought was interesting. But yeah, the I mean, Josh Whedon it probably was. I don't know. Probably I don't know. It, it could have been. I don't know. It's just it's shot on video. I don't know. <laughs> no offense to Josh. If if you didn't. Do... <laughs> um. Oh boy, we just uh, we just unleashed on uh, unleashed on Josh Josh Whedon. I, I'm sorry if I. We're if, gonna pay for that. I'm, I'm sorry if if you if you ever listening, I wish you doubt. Uh, I hope your movie is very fine indeed, and not shot shittio, but um, you did great with the Avengers movie. Um, Avengers mm-hmm. is awesome. Josh Sweden is a moron. <laughs> um, he fact- only farted at geniuses with with the Avengers. <laughs> um. The thing I noticed with the Avengers and another comic book movie is that there's a central character that's featured. With the mask, the mask is from Loki. And in the Avengers, the main villain is Loki, the brother of Thor. Ah, yes. And in the mask, the mask was made by Loki. Yeah, yeah. So I I smell like... A crossover somehow with a mask and uh, the Avengers. Oh, good God. Yes, we'll have Jim Carrey as the fifth Avenger. Oh, God. Uh, hey, you got no, another green guy? Whoa, we can be cousins. We can be so much BFFs. <laughs> no, make it from the make it the mask from the comic books. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Um, you're like, oh no, you're. Uh, the, the, we, Carrie just, uh, there. Recruited. Be a cartoon Jim Carrey with all the other Avengers. <laughs> uh, um, Nick, um, can we talk a little bit? I just want to talk about our our latest recruit. You see, uh, he seems to be absolutely insane. You know, and I'm a guy who built a, a built an Iron Man suit, so I know insane. And I work with a giant green guy. Who goes batshit insane every time he's mad? But this guy is way too much. <laughs> I have an army. We have a Hulk and the mask. Mm-hmm. Um, just wanted to try to think of last minute like any any other movies you want to mention briefly before we end. Just uh, say thing. Just anything you notice, like, I might mention a couple more, but it'll be very brief. I'm good for now. Um, I guess we could briefly talk about, like, X-Men stuff. Or would it be too much for now? X-Men, I personally have (laughs) not seen the X-Men stuff, so... I would be out of really? it. Yep. I, I've never been a fan of the X Men. I never. I mean, really? I watched. I watched the first movie. Never got into it. Understandable. It's it's yeah. a shift from the comics. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can understand. I just wanted mm-hmm. to see it. What I wanted to mention was. Um, I'm not going to go totally in-depth with 
this one. I just might be brief because we might mention this movie in the future in a future episode. But how are the duck? Uh, what? Uh, oh my god, it's true. It was based... that is Marvel. That is a Marvel movie. It, it, yeah, it was based off of a Marvel movie and uh, a Marvel <laughs> Marvel comic, comic book. Marvel comic. I'm sorry, Marvel comic book. I mean. Uh, it was very interesting. It, 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 I mean, it got, well, Howard the Duck of the comics was very, I would think Morgan would have a lot more to talk about Howard the Duck, because he did a whole episode on it on vaulting, and he explained it, that the character was different in the movie than in the comic book, but I, that's a guilty pleasure for me, personally. I, it's a guilty pleasure no. movie for me. That's all I'm going to say with that. Mm-hmm. You know, if I could be honest, you know, I know that I, I know that we already talked about like practical effects versus CGI. But if I could be honest, the way Howard the Duck is, I think it would work better as a CGI as a, as a CGI film more than like a practical effect because like what they did in in there, I'm not saying that it's bad. It's just. Okay. Okay. I guess. <laughs> okay. I guess Weird. I can. Well, I know. I. 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 I kind of see what you mean. I mean, with the practical duck. I mean, I think that was pretty. Uh, personally, I think it's really innovative because I wouldn't want to see it as a CGI movie because. Ha- I, 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 I'm not a fan of CJ, and when you think of Howard the Duck, I, I picture the movie of Howard the Duck live action. I mean, if, if you made like a CG, I mean, there's so many CGI animals out there in, in live action, and if you made a whole CGI movie, it wouldn't have been that interesting to begin with. Not like a computer animated, but like something like, uh, something like Alvin and the Chipmunks. Yeah, see. Say. And with that, I mean, I knew you could mention that because most of the CGI animal with live action does not really work out. I personally hate those movies. Yeah, well, I hate those movies too. But it's just like, I think Howard the something like Howard the Duck. I think it would suit more like that. I think it suits more as uh, one of those films. It would just it just works better. It would work better out. Well, because, like, hmm. like I I don't mean like. But I, I like it would have at least a more adult tone than something like the Smurfs or Alvin yeah, and the Chipmunks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, it, well it, of course, because Howard the it, Duck is can, very adult. I can imagine, like, if they're if they're gonna uh, if they're planning a reboot on it, then they could make like a satire. Yeah, I would. Like, yeah. They could make a they could make a satire on those films, and I would, <laughs> and if they would plan that out, I would love to see that because after making. The top ten worst films based on a cartoon, like it deserves a thrashing. Oh jeez, I I am sick and tired of that of all those crappy films. Jesus, yeah. that'd be a future episode, so you can enrage all your might on that when it comes. But yeah, I know what you mean. Um. I think, personally, though, the best comic book movie with practical effects was probably Monkey Bone. Oh, Monk... Oh, what? <laughs> I have... Oh, yeah! <laughs> I totally forgot. Monkey <laughs> yeah, Monkey Bone is based off a comic book. Monkey <laughs> Bone... I don't... I'm not even sure. Is that practical effect? Because that's... That's Henry Selick's stop motion. Yeah, that's stop motion. That's... That's it's like, practical. It's stop motion animation. Hey. I, I, I think it's stop motion more than practical. No, it is. It definitely is. It's, 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 it's stop motion. But it's like yeah, no, it I don't. I don't think it's practical because practical stuff like practical is like the thing is there with the actors. Yeah. With animation, if with animation and CGI and stuff like that, they're not with the actors. So I think it's like a completely different thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, forget I said anything. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. What did that? I was going to mention, uh, what was I going to mention? I was going to mention a couple more briefly because uh, it ran a little long. Of course, it'd be a part two because I don't mention everything. Uh, obviously, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Ah, uh, yes. I can't wait for that Michael Bay film to come out. <laughs> I've heard so much stuff. Kill it. I've heard so much uh... stuff about that, but yeah. I grew, like I said in the sequels episode, I grew up on the Ninja Turtles. I've seen The Secret of Ooze so many damn times. I've seen the first one a couple of times, but I just... My younger self loved The Secret of Ooze so much. And 3 was a, a, a kind of a, a thing, but... <laughs> uh, like Rama showing! <laughs> and... I don't, I don't know what I what I would say about the third movie, but the other first two live action movies were pretty good. And I'm what not... about the uh, animated reboot, the TMNT? Uh, Which may or may not have been a sequel to the to the live action movies, but I've I've I thought it was okay, but not the greatest. Yeah, uh, it has one of the best long long takes I've ever seen in a movie. Just. I know it's I know it's cheating in terms of long takes because it's CGI and it's easy to do a long take or easier to do a long take uh, by conception. But just you know, they got that one shot in the movie where where they're all fighting in the climax, and it's just the camera's just zipping from one character to the next, to the next, to the next, and yeah. everybody gets a shot in there. Yeah. Everybody gets a kick-ass moment. It's like that part in the Avengers where they did the same thing mm -hmm. in the climax. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the Avengers ripped off TMNT. Ha, 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 ha. Oh but, my uh, god. Yeah. How did they rip off a Weinstein animated film? They should be ashamed of themselves. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah... I, I don't know how the Bay movie will work out. I mean, I've heard so much. Um, recent, there, I, it's not. It's not. It's Michael Bay. Of course, it's not. No, because it's gonna be. Like, it's pretty much gonna be like uh, Transformers. No. I mean, one thing that they it's to confirm that is that they hired Megan Fox to be April O'Neil. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, what? They That's gonna... the intriguing part. It's like really, there's. There were so many other qualified actresses that kind of uh, auditioned for that part. There were so many great actresses that you could choose from, but Megan Fox? No! Um, hey, it's um, my day. He's looking for great actresses. But see, what I've, I've, I've been following the news on Bay and, you know, the news of the... They've been trying to listen to the fans because the fans are being an outcry because there's huge team... TMNT fans out there, and they're like, oh, don't do this, don't do that! And they're kind of listening to them, in a way, because they turned mm. the, the title to Ninja Turtles and to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so it's full length. Oh, and, really? No. Yeah, they really? changed it. I the, they named it just Ninja Turtles. They changed the title of it recently. So now it's originally going to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and they're going to focus on the ooze that, as origin. Not like they're aliens. I think they're going to stay to the original comic book origins and all that stuff. Because, you know, the original uh, comic book creators are attached to writing it and stuff. So, Oh, Eastman Laird. So they're going to... So you mean they're going to have uh, Shredder killed off in the first ten minutes of the movie? <laughs> I don't know. We, I mean... I don't know. It could happen. It could happen. You never know. But see, we don't know... I, I, everybody's being nerds when it comes to this news, and you, we have to see it until we get a trailer or something, like footage of it. I mean, we don't want to go crazy over it. We just have to wait and see it, what happens. We just got to wait uh, until, like, they, they they show something, like, in San, in San Diego Comic-Con. That's, that's the only time I would know that they would show it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess so. Um... Uh, Jonathan, uh, it's, well, it's not, uh, it, it's not Michael Bay directing it, we have to he's, remember. It's, he's uh, producing Jonathan it. Reebsman. Yeah. Yeah, he's just producing it. He's producing it. So, he's not directing 
Yeah, Bay's not directing it. He's, really? He's producing it. That's the thing. And people are just like, ah. Oh. Well, so what if he's producing it? So what? Does it's it's. It's, it's the director's choice, pretty much. The producer's just, just there to keep everything in a line of the movie, pretty much. Ah. Uh-huh. Now this opens and the a director's chapter. And the director's past works include Wrath of the Titans and Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning. Yeah, and that's not really a good... Uh... Okay. Yeah, so that's the director not... is just... What you like a Michael Bay film? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Good feelings gone. Okay. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm gonna be your best friend. Good feelings gone. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I think it's time to uh, end the podcast. I think we talked about enough, and it's getting to that time. Um, so, this has been uh, Cinema Royale. And there's, 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 there's a lot more comic book movies to talk about. So there'll be a part two of this. And what does a dartboard say? Please let it be Mockbusters. Uh, now I can figure out what the next episode's going to be. Do we got one? Oh, <laughs> all right, we got one. The next yep. mm. next episode is Sylvester Stallone films. Oh, all right. Yo, Adrian. Yo, Adrian. Do you know that? Do Don't worry, my career hasn't taken a bullet to the head yet. <laughs> nice. I may be old, but I can still do more action films. That's what my boys are doing right now. Stay tuned for us. I am the action movie law. Stay tuned. I am the law. <laughs> oh, last thing. Smith Sloan was in Judge Dredd, which was based off a comic book. Next week. Next oh. week. Next week we'll mention that. Yep. Oh. Okay. Next week. Next week. Two weeks from now, we'll mention that. So stay tuned for Cinema Royale. Same time, same channel. Well, same YouTube channel. Okay. (laughs) Good night. Good night. Show for now. Good night, everybody. Go see you next time.
Five, four, three, two, one. Hello, welcome to an exciting new episode of Cinema Royale, where we duke it out for each movie topic. Uh, this episode, we are going to talk about uh, comic book movies, and uh, I also forgot to say happy Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, that's today. Just it's Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Free tacos Hola, for everyone. La, 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 la. Just, want, just wanted to say that. Wrong national beach. So, happy, happy birthday. Arriba. Um, so yeah, comic books is a wonderful art form that's out there besides, you know, books and novels. You know, graphic novels and comic books have written great storylines and great visuals. In the comic books, and lately there's been a slew of comic book movies, you know, movies based off comic books. And today we're just going to talk about uh, notable comic book movies, and we might not get through them all. There might be a part two, so we'll just uh, start off the ones we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. I'll let you guys go first okay, on, like... Then. Uh, uh, we forgot to introduce ourselves. Oh, my bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. What if, what if the noobs here don't know us? Oh, yeah, that's right. My bad. <laughs> Hold on a sec. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm so out of it. Hold Hi, on. this is Alfred. The other one is George, and this is Lucy. <laughs> Welcome to Cinema uh, Boy. Yeah. into a sitcom? Pretty much. <laughs> okay, hold. Maybe I should do the whole thing over again because I screwed that up. <laughs> I gotta hold on. Fuck. Let me do that again because I totally spaced okay. out. Let me do that again. Hold on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 